the blessed time of the Sabbath worship has come. Today, let us share the Word of God with a sermon titled, Judgment Day. In English-speaking countries, Judgment Day is also sometimes referred to as Doomsday. From a different perspective, the dictionary defines this day as the time when our ultimate destiny is finally decided. The last Judgment Day is the day when the fate of all mankind will be determined. Some people will be thrown into the eternal fire of hell, while others will reign with God in heaven forever and ever. Their final destiny will be determined on this day called Doomsday, meaning Judgment Day. The Bible records that God judges and casts the final sentence on each person according to their deeds and how they've lived throughout their lifetime. Today, let us look at the records in the Bible regarding the matters of judgment and how we can improve our spiritual life while walking the path of faith. Most of those who fail to complete the race while walking the path of faith come to easily forget the fact that there will be the last judgment. These people analyze everything with a mindset of how they can gain their own satisfaction and joy from every situation they are in. Due to this way of thinking, whenever their expectations are not fulfilled, they will come to forsake their faith, eventually leave the truth and forget about God as well. So the prophet Isaiah says, those who are left in Zion, who remain in Jerusalem, will be called holy, all who are recorded among the living in Jerusalem. Everyone, when you look at the worldly judicial system, it involves both a plaintiff and a defendant. In order to make a final judgment, the judge examines the defendant's actions to determine whether there was an extenuating circumstance, even if a serious crime was committed. The judge must determine if the cause of the crime is because the inherent nature of the criminal is evil. After thoroughly examining the evidence one by one, the judge comes to make a final ruling. Spiritually, the same is true of our judgment. On Judgment Day, God is our judge. Isn't it all laid out in detail in God's book about what kind of life we have been living each and every day? Doesn't it also record exactly how we have been carrying out our life of faith? I hope that when we come before God on Judgment Day, we will all be allowed to enter the Kingdom of Heaven. Let's take a look at the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 7. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give Him glory, because the hour of His judgment has come. Worship Him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. It was reported in the news that more than 100 million people around the world were infected with coronavirus last year. The number of those infected continues to increase even until now. Thus, the pandemic still rages on. Many people continue to die from the virus. Of course, people are also developing different medicines as a cure as well as various vaccines to prevent it from infecting anyone. Through these things, many people, even atheists, say, isn't the Day of Judgment that the Bible and Christianity speak of actually coming? People are openly talking about such things. Everyone, the world will not always remain as it is now. Someday, we will all have to leave this world. One by one, everyone will leave this world. However, we should not forget that sooner or later the Day of Judgment will come upon the whole universe. Those who do not keep this matter in mind will naturally come to turn their eyes to sinful things, justifying and rationalizing their sinful lifestyles, actions and behavior, though they are not pleasing to God. 
Let's see Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Just as man is destined to die once, and after that to face judgment, surely people will face God's judgment. All the words in the Bible contain the truth. Hence, the truth is trustworthy and true. As the Bible says, we must keep in mind that Judgment Day will surely come upon not only individuals, but the whole world too. Doomsday means the day when our fate is determined. Everyone, what would you want the outcome of your destiny to be? Wouldn't it be amazing if your destiny was to become a royal priest in heaven? Don't you want to enjoy eternal life and happiness with God forever and ever? If so, then you need to act accordingly. Even though in your mind you want to go to heaven, but if your actions are contrary to your desire, then can you expect to get the result you want? All aspects of our life must be aligned to God and heaven. Aren't we strangers in this world, temporarily living here until we leave? Recently, some elderly people left the world after enjoying a long life. In their youth, they were very energetic, but what should they do once they are called back by God? Shouldn't they go? For those who are not prepared, God's call will happen quite suddenly. After a person dies, they will face judgment. Some people will be like Lazarus, whom God embraced and comforted. Others will be like the rich man who went to hell and cried out to someone, dip the tip of your finger in water and cool my tongue. While listening to a sermon, some say to themselves, surely such a day will come. However, once they leave the church, they fall back into the world and commit foolish acts. Considering this, shouldn't our lifestyles be aligned with what is acceptable in heaven rather than what is acceptable on earth? This is because the Bible records that this world is a temporary place for strangers to come and go. Heaven, however, is the place where we will live forever. Whether God will forgive all our past sins or count them against us just as they are, will all be decided on Judgment Day, when the final ruling will be determined. So, we need to be prepared for that moment. God foretold, that day will surely come. That is why the Bible says that we must be ready to stand before God's judgment seat. Let's open the book of Romans, chapter 14. Romans chapter 14, verse 10. You then, why do you judge your brother? Or why do you look down on your brother? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. No matter who, we will all stand before God's judgment seat. Standing before the judgment seat means waiting to be judged. No one stands before the judgment seat without sin. We will all stand before the judgment seat because we were all sinners. At that time, he will either quit us of all the sins we committed in the past, or he will charge all of those past sins against us, saying, I gave you 60 to 70 years, but you neither turned away from your sins nor repented. To the latter, God will give the verdict of eternal hell. Let's see verse 11. It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, Every knee will bow before me, every tongue will confess to God. So then, each of us will give an account of himself to God. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. As one who is in the Lord Jesus, I am fully convinced that no food is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for him it is unclean. When the Apostle Paul wrote all these words to the church in Rome, he said, We will all stand before God's judgment seat. Never forget this. 
If we forget this during our life of faith, we will fall back into the world and succumb to temptation and eventually come to sin. The day when we will stand before God's judgment will surely come. For all human beings who were cast down to earth after committing sins in heaven, God has given them the opportunity to repent by spreading the gospel of the new covenant. Though hearing, some people reject, but others carry out what they've heard. On the last judgment day, when our destiny will be finally decided, I hope that you and I will receive the verdict as those who deserve the kingdom of heaven. Let's take a look at the book of 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 24. The sins of some men are obvious, reaching the place of judgment ahead of them. The sins of others trail behind them. In the same way, good deeds are obvious, and even those that are not cannot be hidden. All things will be decided in this way. On the day of God's judgment, both our good deeds and evil deeds will be revealed. As it is written in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 5 and in the book of Romans, the Bible awakens us to the fact that all our deeds will be completely revealed without missing anything when we come before God. Let's move on to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 6. By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. Doesn't this mean that all things will be carried out in accordance with God's will on the Day of Judgment? It is said that God is now reserving all the things for the Day of Judgment. Looking at these biblical records, I cannot help but ask you to always strive in faith, so that we can all be found blameless and spotless when we stand before God on the Day of Judgment. Let us do so remembering that the day will surely come to us and to all mankind throughout the world. Let's continue with the book of Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him and He will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. To those on his right, God has promised, Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world, that is, the eternal kingdom of heaven. In heaven, you can have everything you want, although you couldn't possess it on earth, and do whatever you want to your heart's content. Let's see verse 35. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, who did you do it for? You did for me. With respect to the way that we treat our brothers and sisters, God records these actions through their eyes and in their hearts. Since whatever we have done will be exposed on Judgment Day, 
it will be brought either against us or in our favour. This is why we cannot take these matters lightly. It is a matter of crucial importance. Let us always engrave this lesson on the tablets of our hearts. When we always treat our brothers and sisters and all the people around us with this mind, won't we be able to become the salt and light of the world? Through this, God will recognize us as those who greatly display God's glory. Won't God grant us more blessings and rewards in the kingdom of heaven? Let's continue with verse 41. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Everyone, the day when our destiny will be determined is coming near. How will our destiny be decided? This depends on our daily actions, attitudes and mindset in our life of faith. All these things accumulate and never disappear. If today's actions were not gracious in the sight of God, they will be recorded as they are. Isn't that why God already proclaimed, I will repay each of you according to your deeds, and I will judge you? Everyone, please, do not forget this. During one's life of faith, this is the moment when I feel the most disheartened. Although thousands of years ago, God had already foretold the judgment, people often despise His words and act against Him. We, however, must pay careful attention to His words. According to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25, when Jesus comes in His glory with all the angels, He'll put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. He gives the blessing of heaven to those on His right and the eternal punishment of fire to those on His left. God continues to watch whether or not we are obeying all the laws, decrees and regulations as He commanded us while we are living with our brothers and sisters on earth. When God said to Abraham, sacrifice Isaac as a burnt offering at Mount Moriah, God continued to observe Abraham's faith. As Abraham obeyed God's will without any complaints, doing exactly as he said, didn't God ultimately save Isaac and give Abraham even greater blessings? Nowadays, we also will come to face many different situations. However, no matter what the situation may be, we must never think, if I were to do this minor thing, it would be okay. We must never choose the way to hell. Rather, we should ask ourselves, which way will lead me to heaven in this specific situation? You and I should be able to make the right choices that lead us on this path. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 15. Whatever is, has already been, and what will be, has been before. And God will call the past to account. And I saw something else under the sun. In the place of judgment, wickedness was there. In the place of justice, wickedness was there. Let's see verse 17. I thought in my heart, God will bring to judgment both the righteous and the wicked. For there will be a time for every activity, a time for every deed. God will bring to judgment both the righteous and the wicked. The righteous act as righteous people, and the wicked act as wicked people do. Since our deeds are accumulated day after day, they all serve as the evidence that God will refer to on the judgment day. After committing sins in heaven and being cast down to earth, 
weren't our souls doomed to die? Thus, even if we were sent to hell, we could not raise any objection. During our lifetime, although God has given us the opportunity to come to repentance, some simply forsake God's grace. We must never disregard this opportunity. Let's move on to Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it. Earth and sky fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. Here too, it is recorded that the dead were judged. They were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what he had done. According to what he had done, everyone, from this moment today, let us quickly change. It is best to change from that very moment once we realize it. Each person was judged according to what he had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Think of Judgment Day. We were all destined to go to the place of suffering forever and ever, as it is written. There is no one righteous, not even one. All of us were sinners, who had no choice but to be thrown into the lake of fire. But God gave us one more chance. God opened the door for us once again, giving us the opportunity of a lifetime. However, if we continue with such a corrupt mindset and the evil thought we had in the past, then there will be no choice but for us to be thrown into the eternal fire of hell. Thoughts like, because we are human, isn't it natural for us to do things like this? Or anyone could commit such a sin. We must not rationalize or justify our deeds like this. We have already sinned in heaven and were destined to die on earth. But God has given us one more chance. If we miss this opportunity, we will never, ever be given another chance. So even after receiving the truth of the new covenant, if we walk a path that God does not want us to follow, the Bible says that no sacrifice for sins and repentance is left for us. Let's look at the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 26. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left. There is no sacrifice for sins. If we claim to be without sin, we make God out to be a liar. This is clearly explained in the book of 1 John. Considering the fact that we were cast down to this earth because of the sins we committed in heaven, we should spend all the time we have been given to live on this earth focused only on repentance. Earth is not a place where we need to compare each other, judging who is good and who is bad. This is a place meant only for repentance. Isn't this why God tells us to be humble and to serve one another? Why does God teach us to do that? One might think that if we are God's children, we must become higher, better and superior to others. However, from the moment we receive God's truth, God is guiding us to be in a position where we can lower ourselves in order to serve others more. This is so that we can gradually realize that we should not be the people who are arrogant or pretentious. Everyone, this is the way we should be according to the truth God has taught us. So the New Covenant says, have humility towards one another and do not be proud. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 again. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left. What is the expectation? But only a fearful expectation of judgment. After that, the only thing that is remaining 
will be God's judgment and punishment. There is no room for hope, joy or any expectation. The people of the world live without knowing this. Because they live without knowing it, they want to be treated as if they are superior to others. This is the way things are in the world. Those who want to be exalted are those who do not even know why we have come down from heaven to earth. It means that they are not qualified to receive the truth of the new covenant. But only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified him, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, It is mine to avenge, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Remember those earlier days, after you had received the light, when you stood your ground in a great contest in the face of suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You sympathized with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. For in just a very little while, He who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith, and if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believe and are saved. Everyone, since the time that people are born in this world, they feel that they can grab everything in the world and have authority and power over it. But we know why we are now living on earth. Therefore, we should be able to choose a way of life that reflects the ones who understand the truth. We must keep in mind that there will be a judgment. Until Judgment Day, we should continue to grow in our faith and improve on our weaknesses. When our life of faith is complete by carrying this out, God will praise us by saying, you did a very good job. We will be welcomed and approved by God as the eternal citizens of heaven. After we have received the knowledge of the truth, we must never again turn away from God. For the rest of our time on earth, let us always follow the teachings of our father and mother with an obedient heart wherever they lead us. The Bible says that those who follow them, wherever they go, will be saved. Furthermore, didn't God teach us that obedience is more pleasing to God than to offer a hundred or a thousand sacrifices? Once upon a time, there was an elderly couple with only one son. Even though he grew up, he didn't want to make money or get married, but just sat idle every day. So his father said to him, because you are just playing around, I can't leave a single penny of my fortune to you. He added, if you want to inherit the family business, make money by yourself and bring it to me. If you do that, I will consider whether or not I will leave my fortune to you. Upon hearing this, his mother gave him some money because she knew that after he went out to play, he would just come back home. She said to him, go and comfort your father. Tell him, I made money today. Just as the mother expected, the son spent the whole day playing around the market and visiting his friends. After that, he returned home at sunset. His father asked, Did you make any money today? Then he took out some coins, saying, Yes, I made a little money. The father took his son's money and threw it into the burning furnace. The son just looked blankly at it. You definitely didn't make this money by your own sweat. It was the same the next day. The mother secretly gave her son money again. That day too, the father threw all the money 
he brought into the furnace. The son just stared at it blankly. One day, he finally earned money by the sweat of his own brow. To make the money, he split firewood and carried water buckets several times. It was really hard for him to earn that money. That day too, the son said to his father, I made this money, showing it to him. This time again, the father said, Today too, you must have received this from your mother. This is not money you earned from your own work. And he threw it into the furnace. The son was startled and tried to take the money out of the burning furnace, searching through the pile of wood. Seeing this, the father immediately came to the realization, today you must have worked hard to earn money. Through this interaction, even people can tell immediately whether he worked hard to earn the money or obtained it freely. Then doesn't God know all our sins and shortcomings? The writers of the Bible recorded that God judges us according to our deeds. Jesus himself came to this earth and expressed to us the scene of the last judgment day. Didn't he teach us in the book of Matthew chapter 25, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me? Therefore, we must have this mindset to remove all the sins that we have committed in heaven. Today, once again, let us engrave these words deeply in our hearts so that we can be found worthy as the righteous on Judgment Day. I hope all children of Zion will be able to return to our heavenly home and restore the glory we enjoyed in heaven once before. Life is too short. No one should boast about his youth because he is young now. That youth disappears in an instant. The Bible and the prophets constantly emphasize that we should make every effort to be found spotless, blameless with Him on the day when your destiny will be determined. Those who want to return to their eternal home, heaven, must remember that there is the last judgment day and reflect on how they live their daily life. They must ask themselves, today, have I lived according to my faith or were my actions and thoughts led by the world? I ask you once again to prepare for the kingdom of heaven with whatever time we have left in this world. Hoping that you've received much grace, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.